What is up people, how's it going? This is Bharat and welcome back to yet another video series. This is going to be an interesting series of videos because we're going to be interacting with the OpenCV library and integrating it as part of the KVMD application. So I'm going to be talking about more of that as we go through this video. So without any further ado, let's get this video started. All right, so what are we going to see in today's video? In today's video, we're going to be integrating the OpenCV Python uh, with our KVMD application and trying to build something uh, useful as part of our desktop application. So you're going to be primarily looking into reading uh, the CV2 image and showing it as part of our Kiwi uh, application and also probably taking screenshot and things like that or taking a picture. So why I'm exactly showing you guys this video as part of the start of the series? Primarily because once you have the image in hand, you can do multiple different things, including post deduction, edge deduction, OCR. You are also going to be looking into uh, integrating Tesseract into our KVMD application. All of that are going to be part of this series. So let's get started for this video like i said we're going to be interacting or including our open cv python's cv2 and uh, reading and showing image so what do you need for that first of all i already have my uh, project setup so if you haven't done it already make sure to do that the first thing you're going to do is uh, install the open cv python so you can do it by just saying open cv hyphen python and it automatically take care of include in uh, installing all the binaries that is required for this to work so once that is done we're going to be using the cv2 which is the latest version of the latest uh, class that is going to be useful and uh, we're going to be actually reading the image from a video camera device and then showing it as part of our application so let's wait for that to complete and we'll just get started all right, so as you can see that the application is done, installing the pip install is completed. So just directly go inside and start with o import CV2. And we're going to be using multiple different things as part of this. So what do you need primarily for the CV2 to show? We cannot directly show if you already know a little bit about CV2, you have a lot of different things that it can do. Like you can take image, read image, show image and things like that. But this is not just an image that you, you already know about. This is basically like a CV2 specific image where it has a lot of different properties including uh, you it can actually convert your image into numpy array and then do a lot of different uh, calculations on top of that because we're going to be making sure of that cv2 image uh, for a lot of different things like i said like pi tesseract we can do uh, optical character recognition or basically in the simple words you can do handwriting recognition right that's what is going to be very very important so let's start it let's get started because once you have the build method which you already know from the kvmd uh, this is just going to add a simple button but what I need for that is to first of all have an image. I want to show an image on the screen and this is going to be like a real time image meaning that I have a camera already present here. It's going to show a yeah, video at real time. So what do you need for that first of all to have a uh, layout at add widget. Uh, let's get started with a simple image. I'll just call it as uh, the uh, image. All right, let's just call it image. And what do you need for that? All right, so first thing we need for this is to add the image. So image is just going to be a class that's present as part of the uh, Kiwi, Kiwi itself. So you just can do is Kiwi UIX dot image and it'll automatically become. Let's use that. So from Kiwi dot UIX uh, import image, All right? No, Kiwi dot UIX dot image import image all right so we already have the image now present i just need to add it to the uh, widget so let's just do layout dot add widget and i'm going to be adding the image right now and nothing will be present here because we haven't actually given anything to this meaning that we haven't told this uh, we haven't told that uh, this image is going to be basically uh, like it's, it should be basically a static image but we don't have anything of that sort here so what we need is to make sure that we are reading the cv2 image and converting it to a texture and then loading the texture as part of the image. So that's what you're going to be doing. All right. So after that, uh, after you have loaded your image and things like that, just let's get started with the CV2 dot video capture because this is going to be the method that you're going to use. And this video capture is basically nothing but capturing your webcam or your uh, your camera. And once you have the capture uh, object created, let's get uh, moving. Now, what we need is for every every second, we need to have a 30 frame per second, right? That's that's how a video is getting going to get loaded. Uh, since we cannot show like a video itself in real time, we need to create uh, something that's going to be similar to a video. We're going to be loading an image 30 frames per second and we're going to continuously do that and it look like an image or it look like a real time video so how do you exactly do that we're going to be making use of the clock that comes as part of the kiwi just say kiwi dot kiwi dot clock 
import clock all right and you just can now set say you can now say clock dot schedule you, you have to always keep it schedule right so it's just schedule interval and we have to have a method which is going to be able to do the work that i set take the image from the uh, cv2 and one that once that image is have we have that image you're going to convert it into a texture and then load it to image that's what i'm going to be doing so we need to have a method so let's just say that uh, load image or load video method let's have an arc here so that we don't miss things and let's for now pass it all right so we're going to say self dot load video and you need to say how many times this has to be loaded so i'm going to say one by uh, 60 frames per second basically this means that you're going to say one by 60 frames per second you can even say one by 24 one by 30 and things like that but let's for now keep it as one by 30 uh, so every 30 seconds or every 30 times per second this thing this is keyboard loading and that's that's how we have a 30 frame per second video now the time to look into the load video method where you're going to be uh, handling the entire stuff so first thing we need is we already have the variable called capture that already took care of initializing our video camera and started capturing data it's, it's doing it in the background but we need to now read it in the front end so we can say it's going to have a return status and then the frame itself by you can just you know, read it by saying read once you have the frame with this frame is probably going to be the image itself or the video videos per frame itself so let's try to now load it or keep it uh, assigned to a variable so that when you do an image capture we can directly get this image and save it or get this frame and save it so let's say that uh, frame load uh, frame initialize All right let's say the self dot frame just i'm creating some uh, class variable and putting it inside that or uh, image frame now I'll, I'll tell you why this thing is going to be needed but now let's continue with this now this once you have the frame uh, we are now able to we need to go now get the buffer from that or the buffer is basically like a byte byte data from that and then use that byte data to initialize our texture this is going to be like the a standard step that you ob obviously have to do so let's uh, let's do that and i'll explain to you what is exactly happening here all right so i quickly wrote three lines of code and i'll, I'll try to explain it as easy as possible for you guys so very simple once you have your frame now we are now saying flip it into a string so that's going to be the buffer that you're going to have so if you see the uh, context or the use of this uh, the flip you can very well understand that it flips the array in one of the three different ways you either flip it as part of a row as part of a column or as part of a row and column combination so what you are saying just flip it to uh, zero which means when you say zero it's going to be basically in this format so this is what this is what the flip function does now why is exactly is this flip function very required well once you have the buffer in hand this buffer can then be given to the kiwi's own texture the texture is nothing but the class that comes as part of the graphics package now the kiwi has this graphics package which is basically the backbone or i would say the the base layer of how you are able to see a widget and things like that once you have the texture in hand you guys we're going to call a method called as blit buffer so what exactly is this blit buffer method so blit is actually a form of computation or you can say that it's form of a, it's a slang that's probably used or even a term that's probably used in uh, in two dimensional uh, graphics and analysis so what exactly blit does is that it's it's able to convert your buffer image a uh, buffer data into the color format that you're giving and the buffer format you're giving in rapid format in real time you don't have to wait for it it, it takes care of doing that for you and that method is actually present this method is very very important for us to convert our texture into the texture that we want to see now once this method is called it's very very simple from you you're just going to say self dot image uh, dot texture and you actually say or initialize so this this texture so image has its own texture variable uh, or data and you're just gonna uh, put this data or put put this texture into images texture and we are successfully done though we run this application we're gonna have a very simple image showing and probably that's what you're gonna expect from this all right so i'm able to show you guys the image that is present here so basically what is happening is that it's loading things 
at 30 frames per second that's what is happening right now it's loading things at 30 frames per second or i would even say 33 frames per second because we divided it by 30 and you can definitely see that the image is real time i'm not doing anything extraordinary here so the image is completely real time and it's able to show that to us so you can even see my face oh hi all right so that's what is happening now this image is actually real time and now the uh, the, uh, the the data or things that we need to do from here is to just click this button if you click this button i want to catch this image and store it into basically my database or my i, I would want to convert it to a, a static image and store it locally now what do you do for that let's close this thing up and what you're going to do next is that we already have the frame or image frames saved here right so once you have the md button created so let's get this md button save img button is equal to this and just now say save save img button dot bind and we will just say or create a method as called as save image or take picture and call that or bind it here on press all right so we bound this method let's initialize or put it here make sure to format it properly all right so in this method now we are going to be successfully saying uh, you already have the image frame so you don't have to worry about it you will just say give it a name probably i'll just give it a name like uh, image name uh, picture at you can have a timestamp but i'll just say a time like 12 or 2 2 all right no it will not accept this so we'll have 2 2 this is going to be the image uh, name and you can directly say cv2 dot i am right you have the file name which is going to be the image name followed by the image frame so that's it work is done when you click this it should save this uh, this the, the, the specific frame and uh, into a, a png file make sure to give it as a png file don't forget that and pretty much the work will be done right there all right so let's uh, run this up again stop and start all right image has started mm, i don't want it to have something terrible let's let's say that i wanted to um, take this picture oh are you guys unable to see it all right so this is pretty much right here right i don't want it to do something like that uh, what can it take what image can it take let's try to take my face all right let's try to take this one right here let's try to take this picture i want to take this picture so what i'm going to do is just go here and click on this pretty much done if you go here you have the picture right here keep it here mm. and check this picture out amazing quality right it's also good in quality because it's taking the picture and at the same time we have successfully taken an image uh, loaded to real time and uh, we actually are capturing a video real time and saving it so this is a very simple uh, uh, video again but we're going to expand from here once you have this image you can do multiple different things you can run it in ocr you can do edge detection you can do multiple even you, you can even do edge computation all of those things does run successfully uh, with the help of the kiwi application so that's what i really wanted to show you guys if you really appreciate or like this video do not forget to drop a like and drop down any comments down below i'm definitely going to be making more videos along this uh, this topic uh, or, like i said so if you if you are interested for that stay subscribed i'll meet you guys in the next video under thanks bharat peace out have a super awesome day